What's up, brother? How you doing today, Mark Bare Naked Willie, with the new background? Looking sweet, brother, looking sweet. I hear some major tunes in the background, Dave. Are you jamming out to the final show of 2022? Final show 2022, and we're here to knock it out of the park. Obviously, with this guest coming on, we don't even need to be here, Mark. Honestly, we can we can just we can just bring them in, shut the show down. You and I go grab a cocktail and watch and enjoy, just like the rest of the audience is gonna do. <laughs> Dave, that music is crazy loud. I just heard someone say, turn it down, brother. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. How you doing, brother? Dave Cooper, here we are, the final show of 2022. It's been awesome, and our guest is the perfect guest for an awesome year together. You know what? He is the perfect guest. He rounds out all of the things and all the other guests that we have on our show throughout the year. Uh, he works with all of those guests for the most part that we have on our show throughout the, the year. And the best part about it all is is Mr. Stephen Basic is all about sharing knowledge. He's all about Big Red. He is, he is all about helping others build it better. And that's what we love. Oh, and he's going to surprise us with a fancy new wardrobe. Um, Dave, let's remember we have an incredible audience. We do. Um, five platforms. We do on five? Five platforms for, I mean, two and a half plus years. And we got the Twitter. The Twitter. Get your tweets on. The, the Twitch. You don't Twitch too much. That's where the young folks are. The Facebook. Oh, yeah. Get your Facebook on for us older folks. That's for sure. The LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where it's happening. And where all the episodes are, including the live ones, YouTube. YouTube. And if you're not subscribed, you're wrong. 10,000 hours a month being watched on our show. Man, that's mind blowing. It's great. <laughs> it's fun. We're sharing the knowledge. We're getting it out there. And we're only bringing on the best and the brightest in this industry. We keep it at a very high level. These are the people that you'd have to wait in line to see at a trade show. Now's your chance to ask them any questions you want to ask them. Because Mark and I self, we bring them on to this show so you can ask those questions so you can learn to build it better super excited about it and i'm super excited to welcome him absolutely i encourage everyone to connect with steven uh to follow him on on, on, on the build show and on on youtube he's all over the place on instagram and then make sure you connect with the people in the audience right because you are the audience and connecting with your friends uh, allow for the conversation to continue to grow. So please do that. Hit those connects, say hello to one another as if we're standing together. That's we right. Do that in person. So do that virtually. That's right. So make sure you hit that share button. Definitely let people know that we are live right now. And we will be for the next 40, 45 minutes. Well, Mark, listen, I know there's a lot to cover. We got to talk about, you know, what it truly takes to be a high level designer and architect such as Stephen Basic and, and, and the thought process and the mind, the mind thought press, right? The Jedi mind thought, thought process. I think of Big Red almost like a lightsaber, right? He's going to come on waving that damn thing around you better duck because you might get hit with some knowledge uh, a, a, a lifesaver with the marine background how about that that's a, you know what that that's like a double whammy i'm surprised there's not a star wars with stephen basic and it you know taking on Darth vader hey you know marvel's got some stuff coming up and and so does disney so you never know big red might be in a theater near yeah you. for for sure all right well why don't we hop into it what do we got mark don't we have something don't we have something exciting I think um, I think Steven's jumping up the bit to say something, but let's see what someone else has to say first. Let's do it. Hello, friends. It is Building Science Friday. If you don't know me, my name is Matt Reisinger. I'm a Texas contractor, and it sure looks like I'm in Texas today, doesn't it? I got a full build show camo on today. Uh, I'm about 20 miles from the Mexico border. We've got some family uh, deer hunting property down here, but... I wanted to say a huge welcome and thanks to Steve Basic, who I believe is doing our speaking today. Unfortunately, I couldn't join you guys. Uh, I've got cell coverage in town, but not very good at our property. So 
Uh, while I'm in town, I wanted to say hello to all of you, my building science friends out there that are endeavoring to build better houses uh, every time you build. I know that's uh, certainly been my secret to success. And I think that's what's gonna continue to drive our passive house community is contractors, architects, uh, all the other people that are involved in the business pushing to do better and better every time we build a house because that's an opportunity uh, for you know a house that's going to be around for the next 100, 200, maybe as much as 500 years or longer. So why not do it right to begin with? And, it, and of course, all the stuff that we care about is stuff that's not going to get remodeled in 20 years when the kitchen goes out of style or when uh, you know, these people decide that uh, they want to repaint or do something differently. Everything that we're talking about in this group uh, are things that are going to last for a generation or two or maybe even longer and make a big difference for those occupants when it comes to their comfort, to their health, to the durability of that house, to the longevity of that house. Uh, with that being said, I, I want to also say a huge thanks to Steve Basic, uh, who's been an incredible friend and a leader in our industry. Uh, I'm just so thankful for Steve and what I've learned from him over the years. Uh, I think some of you may know I built a house for my family just recently, uh, and I built it with Steve's details and with Steve's help. Uh, and the things that I've learned from Steve and, and implemented on my own house have led to just the most incredible house for my family. I've absolutely loved it. It's, it's been such a blessing. Anyways, uh, you guys have a great Passive House Friday. Sorry I couldn't join you. And uh, hopefully I can catch a recording to hear what Steve had to say. You guys have a great day. Catch y'all later. All right. How is that? Oh, my goodness, goodness. Matt Reisinger in the house, Mark. We're going to have to send an invoice to FedEx for that, that nice advertisement about 40 seconds into it. Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, why don't, why, don't we, why don't we bring our good friend Steve in? I don't think we can say anything that tops that. Please welcome Stephen Basic Architect. Yeah, what's up, Stephen? Basic Architects. That was that was an awesome surprise. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Matt. And you know, it's the, the the thing about the industry. You know, thanks, Matt, for saying the kind words. But the thing about the industry is, is it takes w more than one gear. That's right. To turn the machine, and and Matt is a huge gear in the machine and the build show and everything that Matt has done is just been absolutely incredible i mean there's i i you know walking through the airport i get people thanking me for videos and for the build show and i i was at disney at christmas and a guy came up to me and he said build show right and i said yeah and he goes man i watch all your guys videos this is awesome so yeah i mean kudos to matt for uh you know just developing that platform and uh getting that information out there and all my colleagues that are on the build show doing a great job sharing information. You know, uh, be, when we were talking, uh, last night, uh, Dave, Steven goes, is there any, is there any surprises or anything? So I had to lie and say, no, th there's <laughs> that was no a big surprises. surprise. That's not who I would have guessed. That was awesome. So, but, but I will, I will tell a little story, uh, that Steven probably doesn't want me to share. And you're gonna get a kick out of this. So that guy that uh, that um, Stephen met in Disney World asked for his contact information. <laughs> and little known fact: when people ask uh, Stephen for his information, he gives them Jake's phone number and Jake's email. <laughs> I said, call me anytime. Anytime. It, it's uh, through the night. The, the truth has been available. revealed. They're like, "Why Missouri?" I was like, "Oh, it's a second office." <laughs> But, you know, I being being that I was on a trip to uh, Switzerland with both of you guys, um, I, I, there are there isn't two other folks that love each other more or nag each other more. Uh, so it's, it is truly a love hate relationship on some days. But you guys have a lot of fun doing it and they like to fish together. Yep. yep. Awesome. So go ahead, Mark. I saw you were taking a breath, Mark. I saw I, it. I, I'm just excited, uh, and I think the ensemble today is perfect for folks that are meeting Stephen Basic Architect for the first time. Um, yeah. When you follow the video series that he has with The Build Show and when you follow him on his Instagram, you will note that uh, the largest response is typically when he delivers a big red uh, video. 
And so it's a highly detailed video. That's the shirt you're wearing today. No one can wear that shirt as good as you can. Uh, they're, they're on Amazon. Just uh, look them up uh, and uh, go get yourself a big red shirt. But, um, Stephen, this year has been full with a lot of new projects, and you got a whole bunch That's right. planned for 2023. Yeah, and- you know, one of the cool things is, is, you know, this year we did, we certainly did a bunch of uh, very interesting stuff, but one of the things that I know, you know, I'm keen on is I don't like to do things again and again. I like to learn from what I just did. So I got to say, after a couple of years of doing build show stuff, I'm just really paying attention of how can we deliver the best information and the best education to the industry. And and I say education in a sense that we're all educators and we're all students. I don't mean it as, hey, I'm the teacher at the front of the class and you guys are sitting in the classroom. No, no, no. We're all at the circular table, right? We're at the Knights of the Round Table. It's just for thousands of us in the industry. We all have something to share. It's uh I I have my daughter who, you know, has been working with me for a couple of years. And you would sit there and say, okay, what does she know? She just graduated a couple of years ago. She doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. I'm not going to listen to her. No. She sees things in 2022. The technology that I understand in computers and rendering and in architectural illustration is a hell of a lot different than what she brings to the table. So I have to sit back and listen. We we all have something to offer. And if, if you're a youngster in the industry, then share your mistake. And then you can get someone with a little bit more wisdom that's going to jump up and say, hey, I remember back in 92, I did the same exact thing on this house with the Joneses, and this is how we solved it. It's yeah. slightly different than yours. But the reality is, is we're all, we're all sitting at that table. There, there, there's nobody in front of anybody. And I challenge anybody that sits there and thinks that, they're smarter than me or anybody else at the table. They're full of crap because they're not. They're not. We all have stuff to learn. And if you want to come to the table with your chest out, then you're sitting at the wrong table. That's it. The challenge is out there. The gauntlet has been dropped. Yeah. I mean, next year, next yeah, year, right. you know, I, we, I was going to save it to the end. But the, the challenge for next year is everybody in the building industry should come to the table and say, what can I do to help the industry? That's right. And I, and, and, and quite honestly, Steve, we say it on the show all the time is this, this show, you, the build show, all of the different things, everybody can be sharing knowledge at any given time, whether it's the knowledge you get on these shows or you're on your own job site, like big dog construction and all these others that have taken it upon themselves to pull out a camera and just help teach and share the knowledge, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, and the, I mean, they make money building. They don't make money doing social media. You guys make money building. You make money drawing. You choose to educate because you like to be a teacher and, 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 and you have a passion because you know that we can do so much better. And there is a, there is a personal benefit. Years ago, I remember reading um, this book and it was talking about, If I take the time to share the information and empty my brain, I create a vacancy for me to think more. Yeah. Right. All these people that hold their cards really close to their chest and think that their details are some kind of national secret. They they can't move beyond it because they they have too many cards they're holding. You got to get rid of them and uh, and start new and start thinking about what's the next best thing. Yeah. You have a really good way of always clarifying points and 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 bringing it bringing it down. One of the finest things I've heard you say is 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 in line with that. It's share your greatest idea, share your greatest plans because they're stepping stones to the next great idea. Um and it, and it's funny. Like it is it is I could I, I feel this is true. It is now common practice to be among the people that are sharing and if you are the person like steven says that keeps it close to your chest then you're going to become that loner right so why just get it out there and get it out there and if someone comes along and tells you that what you said is not actually correct and 
teaches you why, that makes you better at you. Yeah. You know, it's interesting yeah. on it, like, like Instagram, I'll, I'll get somebody that follows me and I'll go look and they'll have like 60 followers. If they make a good comment, I'll go right on and follow them. And I've had a couple of them message me and say, why? Wh thanks, but why are you following me? And it's because we all have something to offer. So make sure you're sharing. If you're a builder that's just learning, then share your questions. You don't have to share solutions, but share your questions. You, the, the whole goal in our industry is to create a discussion that never ends. There you go. All right. Well, so Jen put a, a in the private chat here, and I, I'm going to ask this, and then we're going to hop into your mindset and your process when you go into designing, whether it's a new construction or a retrofit. But Jen did say she's curious to learn what were the top mistakes you made in years past and how you learn to fix them. Uh, and then number two questions, because maybe they tie in, mentorship, does it still really exist? How do you drive apprenticeship mentorship to expand the circle of knowledge? So the first one, I mean, that's a pretty easy one because at the top of the list there is client relationships. Um, I don't think, I I think I would retire and, um, you know, when I'm finally not here, I will still be concerning myself with how to deal with clients because it's just, there's so many variables there that come into play that it's it's always an interesting journey, but it's always a challenge. And you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out, and uh, and that's okay. That's okay because I don't think you know we, we couldn't marry everybody in the world, so um, we have to we have to choose. And so right. the same with our our clients, right? But um, but you know how to deal with some builders. Um, there, that's always a, a challenge. I mean, relationships are probably one of the hardest things for me to deal with. I mean, getting information, that's pretty easy, but um, I mean, it, and sometimes you have to throw your hands up. I, I, I had probably six months ago, I had a builder um, come to me and it was a vented roof assembly and he wanted to put a vapor barrier in the ceiling. And I said, why do you do that? And it was climate zone five. So it's not required or even thought the need of. And he started yelling at me and I was like, dude, I'm just having a conversation here. I do this all the time. This is what our building inspectors require. And it's like, okay, the code doesn't require it. So I don't know why your building inspector does. And well, this is what we do. Okay, well, maybe you've been doing it wrong for 30 years. It's, you know, it's it's the unwillingness to come to the table and have a discussion. It's, it's baffling to me that there's still a ton of people out there that want to do it. But I basically turned the guy loose and said, listen, you do whatever you want at your own peril. I mean, I can't, I can only do so much. I sent him a paper Stebrick wrote that said, you know, it's not needed in, in climate zone five and um, that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It, um, it, if, if, if you're, if you're getting a, an email from Steven or a link from Steven that has a Joe Seabrook paper on it and you don't at least take the time to read it, you might have been argumentative, because you, 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 you felt like, oh, my gosh, someone's telling me I did something wrong. Great. Well, put a pin in that emotion. Read what is sent to you. And then go back and say, oh, my gosh, I learned something here. And quite honestly, if you happen to find something in that article that is wrong, if you share that back to Stephen, it will also make his way back to the marketplace. Things do turn out to be incorrect. You yeah. can't assume everything, but when people are sharing with you a paper that is evidence of the testing, like Building Science Corporation doesn't look at one project and say, okay, okay, that's it. This is it. They go to extensive testing. That is exactly what they do. They embody that. So um, instead of and, being- And Joe has, I mean, I've sat in that office for 10 years. I mean, Joe, Joe is one of the smartest people I've ever met, hands down, no argument. But Joe would sit there on the phone running ideas across John Straub and other people, right? He had a whole network of people, John Timmis, uh, Gus Handegord at the time, all these guys, um, uh, Mark Bomberg. These are like building science legends in Canada. 
and Joe would call and say, Hey, I was thinking this, what do you think is, do you think this is what, what, what was happening or whatever the case was, but you know, smart people know who to have a discussion with and who to surround themselves with. That's the for, bottom line. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, real quick, Steve, and I mean, we have uh, about 400 people signed up for today's event. So whether they're going to watch it now live or watch it, you know, the replay of it, why don't, why don't you let them know who Joe is just real quick, just so, cause we're talking amongst ourselves. We know the inner circle, but if we're going to expand, let, why don't you just give a quick background yeah. on who this is and why it's so important. So the company's Building Science Corporation. It's owned by Betsy Pettit and Joe Stebrick. Joe Stebrick is a building scientist that came down from Canada and started Building Science Corporation with Betsy. And just go to buildingscience.com and you'll learn everything about them. But the one thing that you won't learn about Joe that I will share is Joe was my mentor in understanding that information is not ours to keep information we're all just curators of information i get information every day from manufacturers builders clients etc i apply it and you know kind of work my magic with it and then i send it down the road and in the hope that somebody else is going to massage it a little and develop it further and you know i might return to that same bit of information or detail in 2 years and massage it even further because there's a new material out or or something but the the one thing that joe was the very best at was explaining information in the simplest terms but also getting you to understand that the information isn't yours to keep it's yours to share and that we're yeah. curators of information yeah, and this this is why earlier, Steve, you were you were upset that you know talking to contractors and they want to hold things close to their to their vest, even if they're wrong or they don't know they're wrong or they're not willing to learn new things because this is how we've always done it. We've we've all heard that coined term over and over again, and that's the uh, that's the term of death in the business world. I'm not sure why we have to listen to it in our world, but uh, maybe maybe some of these guys need to go and gals need to go take some business classes. That's but what's interesting is, you know, Rob Hoskin, he just made a comment there that kind of spurred a thought. If if I have a thought and I call Mark and, and I say, hey, Mark, I was thinking about this flooring detail. Mark is going to throw a bunch of information at me that's going to further my thinking in that discussion. And it's going to force me to see things maybe in a different light that I never thought of. And so we, we need it. I, I can't even tell you how imperative it is to just have this industry wide discussion that people like Joe Stebrick, Matt Reisinger, all the guys at the Bill Show that you guys every Friday bring to the table. It's amazing that that's what we need to do. It's that simple. It, it, yeah. It's not hard to be who we want to be. It's in, really uh, pretty simple. We just need in to do the sea it. See of, uh, of conversation. We all we also have a, a part of our brain that has an expectation for that conversation. And uh, when you enter into that conversation with folks, I also implore people to start by being nice. Uh, that's a great uh, example I've heard from Stephen and others. If you want to learn or if you want to get something done, start by being nice. Start by being the way that you would like the other folks to be with you. Because if you start off and say, I wanted it to be like this, what are the odds that that cook is going to go on back and, and make your plate extra, extra perfect? Or what if you say, you know, could you just make this little change or can we try this? Can we try this? Or what yeah, about You know, Jen, yeah. Jen brought up in, in, you know, her second question, mentorship, does it really exist and how do we drive? So, you know, for me on that, it's, I would say I don't have a structured mentorship other than both my kids are at architecture school and are working with me. Um, but the important thing I think is that you take advantage of every opportunity to provide that mentorship. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is I have probably a half dozen people that I know in social media that are not, you know, they're, they're learning. They're learning. They're, they're at the, the start of the learning curve, and that's great. But I check in on them every once in a while. I send them messages. Hey, are you guys going to be at IBS? Hey, let's catch up at the Huber booth or whatever and catch up with them. But 
constantly checking in to let them know that, hey, I'm always here if you got a question. If you if you yeah. need something, let me know, and hopefully I'll see you at the at IBS. And these are guys that are doing very, very modest projects. Going to IBS is a huge investment for them. But they're it, taking it the time to go because they care. They care about what they're doing. But more importantly, they care to put themselves in a successful situation with the other people that are going there. And, and I think that's very important. I mean, Mark and I, we did a live um, not too long ago, and we just went on and grabbed one of the builders that neither one of us knew. And we brought him on the live with us. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about what you do. And, you know, we talked about doing that more. We just, you know, haven't had the opportunity yet. But those kind of surprise things where I literally reach out into the crowd and pull somebody up on stage and say, here, sit down. Let's just talk. Because yeah. everybody else out there is just like you. They don't think they have something to offer. They don't think that they're smart enough to talk about it. But the, a discussion is not about who's smart and who isn't. A discussion is about how can we all learn from it. And you hear you hear the conversations with people that are facing challenges. They say, I, I've, I've watched the, the zip monopoly framing. This is a comment that just came up this week. And the people in my market, uh, they're not ready for it. And when someone expels that and shares that forward, that's a, that's a conversation starter of examples of all the other markets that were there first. Right. It's a time saver to use that zip product. It's a it's an insurance savior in many ways for for the climate that's affecting that job. So if you're the first in your market, you're not the first. So those before you. Allow you to be successful. Yeah. You know, I often have said we, we all know what the right thing to do is. We all need the discipline to do it. That's the problem. <laughs> right. We don't. That's, that's that's the bottom line. And and I like IBS. I love going to IBS because there's going to be I'm going to be at somebody's booth and I'm someone's going to come up to me and say, hey, I watch all your videos or whatever. And and I get to talk to somebody that yep. I, I never knew before. They live somewhere in Wyoming. They're building two houses a year. They're trying to do the right thing. And it's it's a great discussion to have. Because if if we're all moving in the same direction, we're going to work miracles. Yeah. And, and you also go out of your way. I know you can't do it all the time, but uh, you go out of your way to also go and visit some people's projects if it works in your schedule. Yeah, I would, I would uh, love to. It's that that's really remarkable. Um, I and, know you and even it. like not, not that I want to plug it, but I'll, I will plug it. We have this whole build show, build Boston series going on. It's 24 plus episodes. And I say plus because we have a bunch of bonus episodes that we're working in, but it's basically following a project from me talking to the client about the project and design and going through site design, building design into, we just um, posted the foundation series and we're going to be moving on to framing here soon. Um, but but even that, you know, go, going in and, and talking to all these different manufacturers, going to visit their factories. We were out at Roseburg. I got to see how plywood was made, how LVLs were made. I, we went up into the mountains and talked about their sustainability program up there and, and logging. And it just, you know. You got yelled at, so didn't you? Information out there. You got yelled at, didn't you, on the mountain? Um, I get yelled at all the time. <laughs> So yep. you want to know it's funny. So th this is totally a, a side note, but to tell you how I get, I, we we went to Disney for Christmas, right? So yeah, I got in trouble because I shut down the um, rock and roller coaster ride. I I was sitting in the front seat and I pulled out my camera to video it. I didn't realize they had a video camera up there, so they shut it down. The guy came over and told me, "Sir, please put your camera away." And all I can hear is Lexi in C2 going, really, Dad? You made them shut down the ride on us? I love it. The thing I is, Alexandra it. had her camera out, too. She just, she just hit it. All right. So 
here let let's get into some building science now gentlemen if we could we're at, we're at 12 30 we got some more fun stuff coming up on this steve and, and i think you know walk us through your process let's say let's start with new construction it's let's say let's say jake bruton calls you right you know because i'm sure he does that every once in a while to apologize for giving you a hard time or something and he says you know i got this really cool idea i want to build a house for a customer xyz they want Wanted to have you know all these bells and whistles and be you know net zero ready like where do you start like how does one start up oh, mark's got something to can, say can i give the caveat can i give the caveat rather than be it uh a project with jake can we do that conversation that dave just brought up on the boston house yeah we can because with, with jake it, it, it actually is a little easier because because jake and i are like-minded it's we know, we pretty much know what we're going to do. But like Mark said, what happens when I get a client that comes to me and says, hey, Steve, I know you design, you know, really good performing houses. But the reality is, is they don't understand. I mean, I'm I've been doing this 30 years. I'm still trying to figure out what a high performance home is. OK, so I, I could certainly write some definitions, but it changes as materials yeah. come out and we learn things. But the reality is, is the, the very first step is to get me and the client on the same page. And and it's not so much. It's it's really interesting, Dave, because the way you pose the question, you would think as an architect, my job is to sit here and just throw out solutions because some architects think that's what yeah. they do. And the reality is, is I'm, and I'm often, you know, I often quote it is. You know, knowledge is about having solutions. Wisdom is knowing what questions to ask. And so when I get that new client and they they come to me and say this, I hit them up with a ton of questions because I'm trying to understand what do they know? Mm -hmm. What do they really want to do? Right. Because everybody wants a passive house until they realize what it is, how much it's going to cost. And are there things that are different about a passive house versus not, right? Like I had a client that didn't want tilt turn windows. He didn't like the idea of it. He wanted casements. So we had to find a triple glaze performing window that was a casement window and, you know, Sierra Pacific delivered yep. for us. So, but, but I didn't know what they wanted or I didn't know he would have an objection to that until we talked about windows. And that particular client, he didn't know that triple glazed windows existed. When I said, you know, we're, we're probably talking triple glazed windows. He said, what, what does that mean? Okay, well, your typical windows are double glazed, means two panes of glass with, you know, um, a gas filled space in between. And we're going to move to a triple glaze. So we're going to enhance the performance by, you know, two times or better. Oh, you can do that. And they don't know. So having that discussion forces us to get on the better on on the same page and the reality is is that every time i have that discussion with a new client i learn something and my discussion techniques get a little bit better because yeah. i learned something from the last discussion like There's hey don't ever approach it that way hit them at this angle right and to, to get that information out of them but it's, it's about asking the right questions, not necessarily giving them the right answer. I mean, designing so, a zero energy house is pretty easy. Yeah. Once we're on the same page, it's it's the management aspect of getting on the same page. That's because, right. you know, one of the things I always say, too, is, you know, clients always have it, meaning the money. Um, you know, they, they, they sit there, every one of them has said, oh, yeah, that's probably out of our budget or something. And then next thing you know, we're putting that on and then some. Um so, but the reality is, is that if they're educated enough and they truly understand the value of that decision, they'll find a way to make that happen. And the same with the builders, mm -hmm. right? It, it's not limited to just having that discussion with the client because I work and I welcome to work with builders that have never done it before. I mean, it's nice to work with builders regularly like shoreline builders have been working with them for 30 years i did my very first project ever with them and uh but it's also great to work with new builders because that gives me an opportunity to insert some influence and some education 
and bring them up and get a better understanding and help the industry. So let me because let me ask you this: sat there and said, "Hey, we're never going to buy a double glazed window again." Then yeah, we wouldn't have double glazed windows. Kind of like single glazed windows, right? There's not many projects that are putting single glazed windows in, right? So getting that understanding or insulating sheathing on the outside of a house. And, you know, it's ha having that conversation and having that understanding, but also having the understanding that, and, and, and I'll credit Joe Stebrick again from Building Science Corporation, you know, he always had me believing that if we can change, you know, 500,000 of the million building um, in, um, applications per year in America and just make them 10% better, that's better than me designing three passive houses a year. Right. As so much as I as much as I favor passive house, and I'm not trying to beat them up, but building a hundred passive houses a year when we have a million, you know, 1.3 uh, million building permits in the country, the hundred passive houses don't even show up on the radar screen, unfortunately. How do you how do you so education, communication, right? That's what I'm hearing. Uh, you know, that you have to go through in the beginning with any uh, client, prospect, what have you that's reaching out. But we also know those are big time sucks. Do you use your channel and social media uh all the things that you've done and said, hey, go watch this and then come back to me or watch this playlist. And, and I'm saying this for a reason because we got a lot of contractors out there that are listening to us. There's a lot in the in the audience right now that we're going to call out as well that are using social media to their advantage. But would you say that the social media helps you educate your clients further than starting brand brand new with somebody that doesn't yeah, know that and doubt. that it's a tool? I tell everybody, every builder yeah. I know, um, the, the guys at LDS, I'm going to throw them under the bus. They're the builders of the Build Show Build Boston. I said, yeah. you, really, you guys really got to get your uh, crap together for social media because you're, you're missing the train. Right. You're, you're missing the train. And it's like, yeah, you might never get a project in Montana and you're not going to build in Montana. I get that. But you having a certain amount of followers and influence – gives you a certain level of legitimacy that when you speak, people are going to start listening. Right. Right. But I mean, that's, you, go, you go, I mean, I, I traveled with Joe. If you, if you went to like an EBA conference and then you go down to the bar at night with Joe, you're, you're sitting there starting the conversation with him the first minute by minute 10, you have 30 people around you. Yeah. And you, I can't even get up from the stool. Now, why is that? Because everybody knows Joe. I don't even have to say his last name. If I'm doing a conference and say, hey, I learned this from Joe, people know exactly who I'm talking about. Name right. somebody else in the industry that we can say their first name and people know him. Nobody. Joe knows. That's a T-shirt. Right. But, but we all need to get to Joe's level. We're all not going to make it, but we all need to strive there. And social media is just the ability to extend the discussion and the receivership, right? Because we could post something, thousands of people see it immediately. That's right. If, if I didn't have Instagram, Creston, Colorado would, wouldn't know what the hell I'm doing out there, right? Or Luke from Rangeline Homes. Those, those guys wouldn't know what the hell we're doing up here. Or if we didn't have BS Fridays, we wouldn't get to listen to the cool people that you have come on here on Fridays and, and talk to them and learn a little bit more. It's and about to get cooler, by the way. Yeah. And even if it's something that I don't necessarily strive to move in that direction, but when you guys sit there and talk about, have somebody come on that talks about modular building, there's something that I can learn because their innovation, their techniques, their way of doing something has some tidbits of information in there that I can use in other arenas. That's right. And I, and I think, you know, one of, one of the things I've, I've been extremely fortunate that I've walked the halls in almost everything I do. I search out the people that are the most successful at it. And then I just go and I talk to them and I follow what they do. Right. And so how do those people get so smart? Because they hang around with smart people. They ask questions and then they think about that answer. And how, how can I use that to my benefit? Perfect. And I also feel that that simple thing, that simple tool, you might have one of these. 
right? Rather than going through the colossal work of doing your website, your Instagram and your YouTube, your Instagram and your YouTube, you are the producer, the filmer, and the actor of that education series. Right. Hey, Mark, and, and Mark. Mark you asked about, you know, do I, do I use the videos? Most of the people now that come to me in search of the project said, Steve, I've watched all your videos and I just want you to design my house. So, you know, when, I, when I'm giving lectures, I ask the, the builders in the crowd, okay, anybody in the crowd want to be the crappiest, shittiest builder in town, right? Nobody puts their hand up. Oh, I have somebody. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. Stand up. Um, but Jake is one of the best examples. I use him all the time because people come to me and say, well, Steve, you don't really understand. We can't do that. You, you can't do that in our market. I said, whoa, back that truck up because let's go down to Columbus, Missouri. Okay. It's not, it, I'm, I'm not, Columbia. Thinking about, but, it, but we all know Columbus, Missouri is not the thriving metropolis of Chicago or New York or San Francisco. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack from Columbus <laughs> exactly. in the house. But Jake and I have what six projects now where people come to us and say, we want you to design it and you to build it. Yeah. So if okay. you're a builder, if you're a builder in America, who doesn't want that as their marketing strategy? Right. That's exactly yeah. it. And you know what? It's it's such a big thing. Jake, welcome, by the way. It's good to see you, my friend. Merry Christmas to Thank you. Thank you guys for the invite. Yeah. But you're, you're, you're so I'll tell you a story. Everybody always asks how I got into doing what I'm doing, right? And because I, I was, I'm a custom home builder, been doing it for years and years, and we started doing video. And, I'll, and Jake, you could probably attest to this. I'll never forget the first time somebody walked into the design center that I had no idea about six months into doing my videos. And they say, my wife, or they said, hey, you're the guy on YouTube. My wife loved that white house with the white subway tile, dot, 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 dot. And I'm standing there, and we have design consultants that are just looking at me like I just took the lead away over the new customer coming in the door but they build a relationship with you before yep. they even see you and that's kind of what you're talking about right Jake it's the best introduction that you can possibly yeah. have for somebody to already feel as if they're acquainted with you and already have a point of respect for you because like it or not with the platform if you have a large voice or something that's getting lots of views then people immediately associate that with you being the expert. And when you're the expert, it's easy for somebody to go, oh, okay, well, we should do it the way he says we should do it. And that that ability to yeah. have that introduction and to have Steve as part of the team where they know, oh, well, we, we like Steve too, so we're gonna be able to hire Steve if we hire Jake. Those are, that's an ace in the hole, by the way. Yeah, I, I definitely is an ace in the hole. I mean, it, it makes a world of difference. And the, the beauty of it is on the consumer side, you both are putting yourself out there every day on job sites, talking about the good, bad and the ugly. You don't sugarcoat anything. You say, well, this is what's going on. This is how we fix it. Right. Because not every job site's the same. So that level of trust and honesty, like most most builders don't want the customer to see a mistake or to or to see something that wasn't right. Or they expect you to have X-ray vision and know what's underneath the ground there. Right. You know, you never know if you're going to find Jimmy Hoffa down there. Who knows? I tell you what, at, at, at 20 minutes before the end of the show, when you bring someone in, all of a sudden, Dave amplifies his voice. I think Steve and I were boring, Dave. And now Jake comes in and Dave's all excited. Well, listen, if you guys have never been on an international trip with these two, just watch. <laughs> it's about to get good. And, I, and, and quite honestly, that's good for ratings. So you guys have well, at it. Actually, I, I was sitting here making notes uh, all the way back to the beginning of the show. Steve's phone number is 7813. <laughs> <laughs> five 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 one two one call, two. Call him any time during the day panic, or night. Actually, that is the beginning of his real phone number. So I wanted to see if it was going to start to panic. Uh, also, uh, I did not wear my big red shirt today because Steve sent me one, and I think he sent me the same size he's wearing, and it's more of a comforter than it is a shirt. There you go. It's a classy <laughs> comforter. How about that? Yeah, Mark. Mark did say earlier that nobody else could wear that shirt but him. 
it's a it's a one of a kind uh it's a one of a kind and then uh jake i didn't realize you had a, a new role is that starting in 2023 I oh see- no we've just never described that as my job title that's always been under my scope uh but it hasn't been part of my title well um let the punishment fit the crime because the role like that is going to put you in the hot seat uh beautiful okay so Jake, you were taking notes. What else you got for us? Uh, I think the the conversation about social media and sharing and all that, that, that's how Steve and I met each other. Steve was putting content online, and I had a client ask about Passive House, and I called him, and his, uh, his nature was to say, yeah, I think this sounds like a, a job that we could work together on. You should bring the clients to Martha's Vineyard to look at these projects we have going. And I was just like, yeah, that makes sense. That's a thing that I do is just take clients to Martha's <laughs> Vineyard. <laughs> did you do it? Though? I did. And uh, I always I think I told this in front of Steve before the uh, the ferry ride from Falmouth out to Martha's Vineyard is about 40 minutes long. And we were sitting uh, talking to the client and the client said, hey, I need to take this phone call and excused herself for a couple of minutes. And Steve and I were sitting there talking and Steve rolled out a set of plans and he had one-to-one scale drawings of a two by six detail of a sill plate. And I was just like, oh, this guy might be our architect. This is more information on this one page of plans than I've gotten on the last like seven sets of plans I've ever touched. I think I might like working with this guy. Like before that, it was just like, oh, I think he knows what he's doing. The clients yeah. seem to agree. Let's see what this, you know, see what happens. And then immediately I was like, oh, yeah, he knows what he's doing. So the right team makes all the difference in the world is what I just heard you say, Jake. Yeah. He like makes your life easier. We make, it's a, make mutual, my life easier it's a mutual sometimes. ease. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I, I make right. his life hard. Sometimes I make it hard. But is there, right. uh, is, is there a, a, a detail or part of a layout that the two of you are opposing forces on. Steve keeps pushing the uh, two layers of sealant under the sill plate. And I think it's a waste of time now. There you go. Are you talking the the layer under the sill seal and the layer over the edge and not allow, he he wants to taper use that whatever goopy stuff and seal up the edge and not allow the, uh, OSB to dry out at the bottom, but that's okay. Where's this magical moisture coming from? Uh, well, we have measured it. So I got an I got an idea. <laughs> let's let's. This listen. is a good nugget, right? Dude, here. Yeah. So listen, we got an audience of people here. We got a lot of building science uh, folks in the audience as well. Heck, we even have Michael Ngui. Maybe he wants to comment on this uh, this uh, argument a little bit. So why don't you why don't you walk us through the detail and then uh, let's let's have this conversation. I like this. <laughs> so, so, so so you're talking the sill plate. And yeah. So sill to slab or sill to foundation wall, the idea of two by six plate, beat a sealant on the bottom of the plate, still seal underneath that, and then beat a sealant under the sill sealer on the other side. Steve and I have used that for, I don't know, when did we write that article for JLC, Steve? 2017? That's like, yes, yeah, six, seven years ago. 1492. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and so we've had great success. Every building that we've built since we started doing that was one under one ACH 50. Most of them, if not all of them, are under 0.6. I think it's probably all of them. Um, we had a job a year and a half ago that was not a Steve project, that was a rental house. And we skipped it and taped on the outside. We got the same level of air changes. Uh, and uh, Steve makes the argument that it's belt and suspenders. Why not? Uh, I think that it's uh, something that we can probably move to the tape because I'm comfortable using a vapor open tape at the bottom of that panel and not having to seal panel to plate there. Well, this is this is the biggest controversy between us. When so here's my rebuttal. Plate detail. Here's my rebuttal. Right. The knowledge is that the detail works. Okay, it works. I give you that. The wisdom is that. You don't, when you ask the question of how does the edge of the OSB dry or how does that assembly dry and what are you sealing in the minute I put that tape or 
um, mastic down there. Am I sealing anything in? Now, I agree, Jake, that you, there might never be a problem. Might never be a problem. But you know what? All the building investigations I've ever done, they were one ofs. They weren't thousands of. Yeah. So, right? so, so it only the takes minutia. that one house to have a special condition. Moisture gets back there, and it doesn't have the ability to get out. But with That's that minutia, uh, Stephen, it's under the guise that Jake said this is a vapor open tape, right? Um, it is a vapor open tape, and it's Sega, and they do a good job at what they do, and they seal it up, and they they do. But I just like the idea of listen. I got a a, a few thousand pound house. I might as well put gravity to work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In our oh, nice. Los Angeles windows out there. He's a, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he's an okay friend of Jake's. Um, <laughs> now, Armando's a really good guy. And you know what? For those of you that don't know Armando, follow him on social media. Armando's a smart guy. He's been doing this. I've known Armando for probably 20 some odd years. And he Armando always has that hard hat on. the right thing all the he time. Always he always has that hard hat on. Um, it, so so as long as our so we're we're skipping past the sill plate, Armando brought up flangeless windows. He might be poking the bear here. Um, he is poking the bear. So uh, Jake Jake went first last time. Stephen flange or clip windows. Um, I mean, if I was building my own house, they would be a Euro style flangeless window. Without hands I, down, it would it would I even did be. build my own house and they were a Euro style. There you go. How about that? So common I, ground. I, I I have an interesting uh if you could get a European style window with a flange, believe it or not, I like to get it with the flange, and then you simply take your knife and cut the flange off. The reason I like that is this 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 added safety net around the window itself that's never going to fall or come off. And it takes you two minutes to cut it off with the handy little knife. Well, here's the deal. If the, the whole reason flangeless windows exist over there is because their wall thicknesses are so damn big, right? Yep. I mean, most of them are some kind of masonry, autoclave block or clay block or something. And then they put, you know, six or eight inches of rigid insulation on the outside and then stucco it. So you, you have wall assemblies that are 12, 14 inches mm. thick. If I have a flange window and I put it out at 14 inches, I have the potential to create this microclimate in the window pocket where that glass, even though it's triple glazed, it's cold as hell because it's not getting the heat, especially a smaller window, right? And, and I've seen that here where even good performing windows – Double glazed windows have iced up on the inside because they're a two foot by three foot window and they're recessed 16 inches in this double wall assembly. You could basically so, make a little greenhouse and put a double glazed flange on the outside and put a single pane one on the inside. <laughs> so I've done that. I've done that as a retrofit where we've done double glazed low E windows on the outside of a, a single pane wood window because we, the homeowner didn't want to lose the aesthetic of aesthetic. those single pane wood windows. So, Or, or if but, you're a historic house, they're right. going to require that single pane got off of one on the outside and then you have that to deal with. But in, in Jake and in, in my defense, in our team's defense, if you're building wall systems that are R40 plus, you need to move to an R7 plus window. And if you do that, chances are you're putting it in a wall that's 8, 10, or 12 inches thick. Yep. You need the luxury to be able to migrate that window in the window opening. So, flange, Which you can still do with a flange. It's just more difficult to do with a flange. Yeah. It's an added yeah. buck, basically. 
Love it. Love it. Why don't, why don't we, uh, let's take a few moments, say a hello to a couple folks here. Uh, they've been waiting for a good hour. And then uh, I, I really want to get into some of the, some of the uh, inside thoughts, Jake, on your side as well. We kind of went down this rabbit hole about customers and educating the clients and the contractors and who we work with. Um, so when we come back from doing comments, Jake, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about who your clients typically are. Are they other contractors or are they the consumer or what have you? And then uh, maybe we can talk about what you think you're your biggest hurdle is with them in the beginning of this conver of the conversation. Uh, I think that'd be very valuable to a lot of the folks out there. So let's run through real quick, a uh, few uh, quick hellos and what's going on. First of all, I do want to put out there next Friday, Stephen Rogers is on BS Friday. We're going to be talking about the big red door, big blower doors, right? Red door truth. Not a red pen, red door truth. I guess uh, I guess December and January is the month of red. Red, red, red. All the right. Energy <clears throat> Conservatory. Minneapolis yeah. blower doors, you might know them. That's right. Hey, and listen, I know there's a ton of comments out there coming from YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, and others. If we miss you, uh, we will get back to you in the comments after the show as well. Gregory Matson says, rock on, fellas. Thanks for joining us. Uh, another good friend of the show, Sean St. Amour. Now, that's a T-shirt. Big red. He likes your T-shirt. Mark, I'll let you take a couple of these as well. All right. So Gregory says, spot on. Uh, I'm assuming Gregory is re referring to that really cool shirt that steven's wearing that's right that's right and this next this next guest also has her own channel you're gonna need to follow them and as you can see in his comment he's supporting another person that has a channel ah live free gives a shout out to big dog who has that's right. the hashtag in the history of hashtags and if you spell it wrong you're not learning it is apprenticeship is an obligation yeah and here, here's one that I think uh, Big Red up there should give a shout out to. I believe you guys spend some time together. Yep. Matt's always a good guy trying to do the, the right thing with um, students. And, you know, yeah. kudos to Matt. He's, he, he's learning. You know, Matt's, Matt's got a really interesting position because he's somewhere in the middle of a learning curve where he's looking forward to get information to turn around and pass it on to the people behind him. And, you know, it's, uh, I mean, we're all doing that, obviously. But, yeah. But he's like, that's his job. Right. Um, so, you know, kudos to Matt because he spends a lot of time. I see him at the conferences and stuff. But Matt is always in search of the next best thing, not because he wants to know it, but because he has to turn around and share it with somebody. And he wants to make sure that his students are getting the best information that they can. A little known fact is Matt is also Jake's boss. Ah, who would have thought? You you gonna let that happen, Jake? I like Matt enough that I'll let him have it. There you go. Perfect, perfect. All right. And and I know Steve, you had you had some slides to get through. I'm not sure we're gonna get to them, but we're gonna work on it here. No, that's um, all right. Christoph Dros, all the way from Poland, agree to develop the industry. We have to share our experiences. You know, Christoph's uh, become a good friend. We're doing some stuff with him. He owns three factories uh, in Poland, and uh, they're doing a lot of work here in the States. Module, uh, if you don't know them, IQ Module and his other companies and architects. So, Christoph, always a pleasure when you join the show. And, hey, you'll appreciate this, uh, uh, Big Red. Christoph and I, when the whole Ukraine thing started, uh, uh, we, we raised a bunch of money and sent a bunch of flak vests and uh, Kevlar and boots and all that. We worked together to make some things happen for, for the citizens over there that were having to put up with that mess. So he's a good, good person. Big heart. Big heart. And he's got like 10 black belts or some shit like that. It's a lot. It's a lot. All right. Let's keep moving on here. Hey, Mark, go ahead. That's your buddy. Okay. Mr. NHB himself, Greg Ugaldi. Says a great way to wrap up 2022. Dave, John, Mark, Steve, and Jake. Fantastic BS Friday. Yeah, if you don't know who Greg is, he's the past chair of the NAHB, the top dog. Updates the president of the United States a couple times a year, as a matter of fact. And he comes on our show once a month to give us an update on what's happening uh, around the globe and here in the United States. So love it, love it, love it. Oh, I don't know this person. Do you know who this is? 
Jennifer Crocus Cooper, Aaron Jones, and Gina at Big Dog Construction believe apprenticeship is an obligation. I, I think somewhere I've heard her called the brains behind the operation, but just saying. I think yeah. most places she's called. <laughs> uh, Everywhere so, okay. except for in Dave's presence. I can't hear you. What? And, and if you want to be on the A show. A lot of hot air here. A lot of hot air. Just, just text her at 781-555-1212. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. There it is. One eight eight. Build it better. That's that's the number you should call. Yes, she is the brains of the operation. I just stand here, look pretty, and run my mouth. That is the truth. By the way, is that a real phone number? Um. Well, I my guess is she just made it up along the way, but somebody probably hates us right now. Someone. someone yeah. <laughs> it's like that, that Jenny song, right? Eight six seven five three zero nine. Like that's right. Change that Eight, number. Uh, yeah, you're right. Now I, I got to figure that one out. Maybe we'll play it. All right, here you go, Mark. Mr. Bob Kelly says, "I love these processes, or in Canada, as they say, processes. processes. We don't have to reinvent the world when we can." It, improvise when we can improvise from others efforts improv there we go the improv perfect perfect well listen everybody we appreciate you commenting out there i know there's some more happening uh you know we even have live you i think i said that right cooling problems instead of heating ones there's some other ones we'll get to uh and i do have to give a shout out because one of my most favorite people in the world uh dr brent mossen uh just moved to Calgary and you won't have to deal with all of that mossen factories you want a, the, an interesting story with him that you guys would really like is dr mossen is creating factories in uh inner city areas and in the rundown neighborhoods and he's actually putting the people to work to build an assembly line for all their products and processes so uh really really cool uh program that he has going on and he's rolling it out across the country dr musson good to see you the all right doctor. the good doctor the good doctor we like to call him jake it's the jake bruton show Wait, buzz had something to say too oh i missed the buzz Oh, yeah, he always says, yeah, 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 yeah. More Jen, less Dave. It's an old joke, Buzz. You know, actually, that's more of a record scratch. All right. All right. Good to see you, Buzz. I love when you're always busting my chops. Thank you so much. Nope. Listen, hey, none of these shows would be so good without, without Jennifer behind the scenes uh, making all this stuff happen. There's a lot of work that goes into these. Jake, it's the Jake Bruton Show. Tell us a little bit about uh, your who your client is and what your biggest uh, hurdles are to typically overcome in the beginning and what you've done to do that. Sure. So once somebody finds us and we have that, that relationship that we were talking about earlier where, uh, you know, there's an introduction online, they have a respect for us. Uh, for the longest time, I felt like uh, our clients were doctors and lawyers and engineers because they made a good living and they could afford to have a custom home built. And that's what we do is we build custom homes. And then I was having a conversation with a, uh, a lawyer of ours or a client of ours that happens to be a lawyer, sorry. And uh, we were talking and they were talking about how I had explained something to them and changed their mind. And I realized that those three, doctor, lawyer, and engineer, they give professional advice for a living. They, they give their opinion based in their knowledge to you to, to, to guide you in the right direction. And that's exactly what I try to do in our sales process and in our decision-making process and the design process with Steve. I'm giving my professional advice as best I know it. And that rings true with those, those clients, the doctor, lawyer, engineer type because that's all they do for a living is give advice. And so it's, yeah. it's easy for us to talk to them in a professional manner, be knowledgeable about what we're talking about and convince them to believe in the things that we believe in. Uh, and I think that's the thing that set us apart from even the people in, in, in our area that are trying to do quote high performance builds. They're still just about, they're selling spec houses or, or a run of the mill custom home that then they're paying for a bunch of upgrades themselves for their clients because they want to build the better house. They don't have the knowledge base yet to be able to inform the client to the level that we can. And that, that conversation where we teach is like the biggest part of our sales process now. Both of you uh, have, have an added step uh, in the, in the romance and building of the early relationship is, is you guys begin with homework. 
right? Absolutely. Um, so I, I don't, I think in that, in that nugget of things, that's part of what Dave was looking for. At, at, at what point does the homework get sent um, to move to the next step? Steve's the first step in Steve's process is homework. Yeah. I mean, the minute they, the minute they send the retainer check, I send them the homework. I put them right to work. <laughs> it's like yeah. you signed on, here's your homework. So the homework is, is, is after the retainer or is it before? No, it's after it's when they're a client, when they become a oh, client. Mark, we don't work for free. Yeah. Well, it's Why not? part of the process, so, but you know, the, the, the things that I've learned about the homework, I told you it's kind of an evolving process is most homeowners, they'll sit at the table and tell you, Oh, Steve, you know, we, we, we have this, we know exactly what we want. And I've started telling them, no, you know exactly what you think you want because you haven't seen the spectrum of what's available. You just know what you know. So let's talk about what the things that you don't know. So the whole or even the list of stuff that they want can inform what they don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And but, but, but getting an understanding and asking the questions of like er, er, everybody cooks in a kitchen, but the, I've had some clients that were near chef quality. And I had some clients that would say, you know, heating up pizza in the microwave is about as technical as we get in the kitchen. So yeah. those are two different kitchen designs in a project, depending on who it is. Right. Yeah. So some people want a family room where they can throw a Super Bowl party. Some people I've done family rooms where they said we're not even putting a TV in there. Mm -hmm. So those, yeah. those are different different views and different different set of values in those designs. So do you actually say to the customer, "I'm giving you homework"? Or do you oh, yeah. use those words? No, there's a homework email that they have to write a narrative. They give me a list of rooms. They break down each of the rooms and write a, a couple sentences about what is um, successful in those rooms. They give me a list of needs, wants, and desires in yeah. the project so that, you know, as I'm designing, we can see what we can figure out and put in the project, get in the project. I'd like to have I a video the, tutorial of the homework, right? It's in the, it, well, it's funny. No, you should ask, Mark, because if we go, oh. if you go to the build and you go under originals, You'll okay. first of all, you'll see the build show build that um, Jake and I did where we did the whole Hilltop Arrow project. But if you go to the build show build Boston, which is the most recent and you click on it, you can come down here and in the project design, I go through the homework that Scott and Jonathan provided for the project. So amazing. You I didn't can watch that all of these yet. episodes and I go through the whole process. Yeah. Uh, so I think the, the <clears throat> best part about Steve's homework, too, by the way, this is just going to be a Steve love hour, uh, is he tells the clients to not share it with each other. Yeah. Because if I tell you the husband, tell them to share it one and work to on it together, voice. it's this weird amalgamation of some of the things that I want. They compromise on the homework. Right. And the whole point is I want your uncompromised opinion so that then I can help you figure out where we should and shouldn't compromise. Yeah. Yeah. And That's brilliant. The first thing that happens if they're working on it together is it's compromised. Well, cause one of them yeah. is going to give in to the other and say this or that. And I, I want to know what's important. And it's, it's really interesting because when you do that, I've had clients where the, like the, the biggest interest of the husband was getting a bathtub in the owner suite because he took a bath every night to relax He'd go into the bathroom, he'd bring a beer, he'd fill up the tub, and he'd, he'd hang out in the tub for like 30, 40 minutes every night. That's how he wound down. Really? I've not, I've yeah. not found a tub big enough, but uh, that sounds interesting. Um, but, but my point is, is every client has a different value system. Yeah. And right. as an architect, I'm pretty naive if I think that if you come to me and say, hey, Steve, I want a 3,500 square foot four bedroom house that I can just whip that up for you. Yeah. Right? It's, and it's by the way, bad. can you add another half bath on the first floor? Now well, that now that everything's done, can we get one more in? Just one I want to build the house or design the house for, you know, Mary and John Smith, not everybody. I want it to be for them and what's important to them. And the, the thing is, is 
even in, you know today i said you know clients always have it but they clients don't have money for every decision so the question is is where do we value those dollars and where do we want to put them right do we want to put it in a stone fireplace in the family room cuz you really want that do we want to put it in a really cool kitchen do we want to put it in the master bath do we want to have two master baths because there is no way my husband is sharing my bathroom with me. And I've had that clientele too. So, you know, I think see, this is brilliant knowledge. I mean, if you really think about it to so you, Steve and Jake and Mark, and even to myself, you know, it, sound, it, 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 it sounds simple, but it's a very complex thing, people, you know, especially husbands and wives and relationships and allowing, allowing you to actually tell them, hey, I want you both to do this yourself. I want you both to let me know what you think is important. And then you almost have the opportunity to 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 mediate before something turns into an argument or one gives up on something else because you know that's that allows you to sit there and say listen i can make all of that happen within your budget and i can give you a little bit of this and i can give you a little bit of this and it'll be the perfect mesh and that's what you both are really saying there's a psychological aspect to this and 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 building a house can cause divorces as well Dana so, Carvey summed it up when he imitated uh, uh, Bush Jr. He says, thousand points of light coming together. Thousand points of light coming together. Come on, Jake. It rings true. I will tell you that when I, uh, when I bought the company from my parents, I sat there with my dad and I said, I need to know what advice you would give. And he, the only piece of advice he gave was sometimes you're going to be a builder and sometimes you're going to be a marriage counselor. That's right. And tell me how to hire people or pay taxes or any of that. Hopefully yeah. I figured all that out. So I don't get in trouble. So, but he said, you're going to be a marriage counselor. I'll, I'll tell you that the evolution before I started doing the homework, this is many moons ago. I go and I sit down at a table with a husband and wife. We start talking about what they want to put in the project. He mentioned something. She mentioned something. He looks at her and said, you never said anything about that before. Well, I really want to do it. They, in in less than probably about three or four minutes, it escalated into an argument, dropping F-bombs <laughs> while I'm sitting across the table. I'm starting to look over my shoulder for a candid camera like, is, is someone punking me? Like, because this does not feel real. And they were going at it. And I just put a stop to it. And I said, listen, there's obviously you guys have to iron some stuff out before we could continue this meeting. So yeah. I'm going to leave How long did you sit there? And uh, you guys have fun. I never returned, never did a project with them. Um, never, yeah, never talked to them again. But after that, I said, maybe there should be some kind of device where – we can iron stuff out before we actually start the project. So I got I got I got a question that I think is going to be very relevant to a lot of people watching that are in the trades that are building. You get a client on board, you sign the contract, right? And you guys are both working with, you know, clients that have pretty decent budget, so they're they're they're, they're a lot of them are powerful people in their worlds and vice versa. How do you control the power back versus them always being down your back cuz they know it all because they watched it on the build show? You know, like there's people that think they control you and own you as soon. How do you change the, how do you change that psychological ownership of who's in charge? So I will tell you that Steve has a different take on this than I do. I don't work with those kind of people. I don't think I have anybody that I've worked with in some time that has made it through our pre-con process that would then be a pain in my rear nonstop. Yeah. So I'm very lucky that like I have the, I have the rural Midwestern clients that are not, we're not building the biggest houses in our market. We're not building for people that run, you know, $500 million or $500 million houses every year. That to listen. I get very down to earth people. So I don't have the same problems with this yeah. that Steve does. I mean, when, when I start a project and I get the call and, and we talk to people, I, I let them know the minute we jump on the phone for the very first time that this is a mutual interview. I'm trying to understand if That's you're right. the right fit for me. I mean, I know you reached out to me and said, Hey, I want to work with you, Steve. What is it? What does it mean to have you as our architect and blah, blah, blah. But the reality is, is I'm sitting back saying, what does it mean to have John and Mary as a client? And 
because there are clients out there that think they know everything and they want me to be their, their drafts person. And I don't want that job. I can get that job all day long. I don't want that job. I want someone that needs, that wants to think about their project. I, I greatly appreciate that, but I'm always telling clients and even, even the best clients, I still remind them yesterday I had a meeting with a client and we ended the meeting and I said, listen, gentle reminder, don't, you don't have to do my job. Don't come back with a revised floor plan. Come back with revised ideas. I'll revise the floor plan. I'll figure yeah. out how to get that, how to make what you want happen. You concentrate on what you want to happen and then I'll figure it out. So, here, I know we're running out of time, and I want to be very cognizant of both of uh, your time. But what I is the, all night. what you are oh, perfect? And I'm sure Jake has nothing better to do either today. What what mm. if I were to ask this? Uh, you know, what is the one thing you wish more builders uh, should do? And let me just be very clear here. This is a, a question that Jen put in the private chat. So the brains of the operation have spoken. Let's hear what you have to say about it. I think more builders should take water management more serious. Say it one I more time, you're breaking up a little bit. I think water management should be number one priority for all builders. And I think that I can drive through any spec neighborhood in my market right now and point out half to 75% of the builders have never thought about water. So, Jake, just because someone puts on fancy white siding with black accent doesn't mean that they, they know roofs. what bulk water and, and vapor does? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I think that it's so simple that we had it figured out in the fifties and we lost it and we're still trying to get back to that point. And I think that that would be one of the single largest impacts to, to housing in the United States. Yeah. You know, in, enhancing Jake's answer, you know, when I talked about wisdom and, and knowledge, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's really interesting to me because if you, if, if I was a homeowner and I wanted to build a new million dollar house and I called the builder and said, Hey, what kind of house, you know, do you build? They would start, Oh, well, we build a, you know, R35 walls and they would start talking about insulation and all of this. But I've never seen a house really fail because of the insulation level. Yeah. Right. So we know we don't even promote what kills like, it should be, oh, well, I have a, a really dedicated um, water management strategy and air tightness strategy when I build a house. You never hear builders talk about that. Like they, right. they don't know what to market. And a lot of manufacturers, I sit back and say, you know, this is a pretty good product, but you guys don't know how to sell it. You don't even know what you have here. And you're making this stuff and you're going out to conferences and have booths and stuff, but you don't even know how to sell your damn windows or your flashing or whatever it is. And it's, you know, and again, that's that discussion. And I think, you know, one of the benefits of Jake and I is that our conversations are with other builders. Our conversations are with clients, obviously, but Jake and I do a lot of time talking to manufacturers. We, we have a ton of friends that are in the manufacturing world that we can go and talk to, right? We can go talk to ATN about Sega tape. We can go talk to um, Ruben, about Advantech, or we can go talk to, yes, um, about intelligent membranes. Um, so we I can was have those to myself. <laughs> or, or Mark <laughs> Willie, right. But, but it's like, get out there and create the network. You know, Peter, Peter Yost, he always, and it's not his quote, he uses that, I forget who originally said it, but, you know, we can't possibly live long enough to make all the prob make all the mistakes ourselves. And so getting back to, and this is kind of my answer is what would I recommend for builders is create the biggest network you can, because the, the reality is, is your network is never going to be big enough for you. Yeah. Never. You, you could say, Steve, I already know 5,000 people. Well, you should know 6,000 then because you you're missing out on somebody. Go well, meet manufacturers. When you go to IBS, make friends in the Mitsubishi booth, make friends in the Huber booth. Someone that you can call when you have a question. These manufacturers are helpful. Yeah, I would also it's say the... find find those manufacturers that are in your market. Not all these materials that you see Stephen and Jake talk about 
are readily available in that market. Yeah. And when 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 Jake said the the water and bulk water and the forms of water and 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 Stephen remarked on really that the insulation is not the killer of buildings and and went on to that my my fear factor response to this is what both of them said is right however i would take it and add another one because we're always going to add more and saying there's so many great materials out there to tighten up a building and to see a building and yes you're seeing that and you're watching it but you have to know what you're doing with it and more importantly is there a fresh air machine for your project so it might be really fashionable to talk about these membranes and tapes and all that but every project that jake does uh, with his team at aero every project that steven does with countless people there's fresh air machines and yeah. um there, there's videos on it for some reason it's not it's not the most talked about thing in our market but our buildings by mistake even without design by mistake are getting below three ACH. If you don't have a fresh air machine, ugh, forget about it. Do you got something uh, to say, Jake? Yeah. That, that conversation that Steve was just putting forth about uh, your network. Uh, I, I used the, the analogy the other day with one of my uh, subcontractors that it's the way that they test the, to get your IRC contractor's license. It, the test is over the book, but it's not knowing the book. It's knowing how to find the answers in the book. And you as a contractor have to do that with the code, but your network is your access to information and the answers in the real world. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, it, both we've all been to Europe, right? And we've seen some of the training and education that those young uh, apprenticeships, you know, and students go through. And I, you know, it's, it's obviously different here in the United States. And it's hard to, to motivate people to motivate people to go out and get that education. You know, it, we, we would like them to go do that. But at the same time, you know, right now our industry is pretty much, you know, uh, I guess self-evaluated, like it's up to you to be better, um, you know, and there's no real training in place that says to get certified in this, you got to take these courses if you're going to build this style of house or you want to, like there should be some accountability, at least in my opinion, the more I learn about this because 130 bucks in some states gets your contractor's license and, and that can be rough, you know, and, 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 and there's not enough young people coming in. So it's even going to get uglier in my opinion uh, with, with, with the newer people that are coming in that are just trying to pick up the slack. They're so busy. They don't go get the training. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but my thoughts are, you know, how, how does that change? I think the, the, the society in the United States for too long was go to college, see you get a good job. That's right. And that was the only path. I mean, that was the only path that I grew up in a family where we had a construction business. And my parents said, you really should go to college. I yeah. went to college because they thought I should go to college and I wasn't ready to be an adult. But I'm still not ready to be an adult, so that didn't help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll vouch for that. He has a hard time with the adulting every once in a while. He does. He does. How about you, Steve? I mean, you're obviously I'm educated. An adult, and I never will be one. I guarantee that. My, that's why I got married. So my wife, my wife can do the adulting for both of us. See, that's what I say. Love it. Right. All right. Listen, a couple more quick shout outs here. We're, we're, we're way over our time, but well worth it. Gilbert Myers watching from Honduras, sunny 85 degrees, best climate to create new stuff for the building industry. Gilbert Myers has a bunch of factories down there in Honduras as well and doing business up here in the United States. So Gilbert, it's good to see you, my friend. I hope all as well. Um, and... We have uh, Craig Merhofer. I think I'm saying that right, Merhofer. Social media has uh, been critical in getting younger people interested in high performance space. Dude, what you guys talk about on a regular basis is freaking cool. 
Like when you really get into it and you really understand the science and you're not just some dumb contractor as we've been made out to be through the years because you didn't have the higher education. What we do is very cool. It's very complicated. It's simple once you know it, but isn't everything in life? I think uh, I think that's the thing here, right? And my grandfather says uh, all the time, an education costs money. You can go out in the world and try and do it yourself and get your ass handed to you and you're going to pay for it. Or you can pay and go get yourself an education. Either way, you end up paying for it. And I think, uh, I mean, I think that's half the battle here. Is like, we do cool stuff, and you guys really do cool stuff. And I think you should be proud of that. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Absolutely. That's the nicest thing I'll say to you this week, Jake. Randy, Randy Favich <laughs> said, "Education getting you down. Step into a slim gym." Yeah. Hey, either of you guys using uh, hemp real quick? Wade Atterbury, hello from Riverdale Hemp Gin. You know, I have not. Yeah, one of my problems is, is you know, in, in the, the industry, I, I always make the comment, the industry corners like a freight train. Um, but the, the problem is, is there's a lot of great materials out there. But it e even as, as forward thinking as I try and be and, and work with Jake and try and be, it's, it's hard to get things to kind of get into the gear works. It takes a while. Like, Hey, where is this stuff? How do we get it? And it's like, I'll, I'll go to IBS and I'll meet a bunch of people and I say, Oh yeah, we can get this anywhere, anytime. And then we'll have a project and be like, Hey, can we use this? Oh, well that's not going to be ready for six months or yeah. we, can't, we can't send that East of the Mississippi or whatever the case is. So it's, there's a there's an onslaught of products that will be here, right? Uh, you guys all went to Europe, and and you see that uh, just as we have fiberglass and cellulose materials peppered around North America, over there they have wood fiber, right? And and hemp is still in its re infancy stage, right? It's coming back around, so it's going to be heavily used in industrial places. That's why I say your local region already factors into this. Your trusses are made locally. Your insulation is made locally. There's a 150 to 300 mile radius, and then someone else picks it up. So sure. there, there, there will be an advent of more materials coming. And a phrase that you hear, uh, I don't know who came up with it, but I hear mostly uh, – Jake use it very well is uh, test, but verify, right? Trust, trust, but verify. Trust, trust but verify. Uh, yeah, I, I'll butcher it every day. But when those materials come about, how how it's used on an application in detail that Stephen and and Alexandra draw is different than it's probably going to be used on an application in detail. Uh, for a project they have with Jake in Missouri or Kansas or or perhaps with uh, Luke in Colorado, it's going to be a different application. Why? Because that's science. That region is very specific. So don't take this nugget and run with it. Building science is not about I heard it, I'm doing it. It's about exploring and knowing that it will work through the people on your team. And yeah. you know what? It's really interesting you bring that up, Mark, because the, the whole discussion and network thing, it's imperative. You know, we, Lexi and I, and, and we do work all over the country. And, you know, what works up here in New England might not work as well in Colorado or in Austin, Texas. And so talking to builders, like I, I had a bunch of questions. I was working, I'm working on a project in, in Austin. I actually called Daniel Glauser, who works for Matt. And talked to him for like an hour. I said, hey, can I call you tonight and just chat with you? And he said, sure. He gave me his phone number. I called him. We talked for about an hour because it's like, hey, up here we do this. But what would you do in Austin? And there were some some things that were slightly different that now I can tune my drawings to for an Austin build that we wouldn't necessarily do in New England. Yep. So with with that with that uh, follow up and what you, what you just mentioned with Austin, here's an interesting thing. In 2035, they say that the climate zone in Chicagoland will be the equivalent of Dallas Fort Worth Austin. Yeah, I, don't, I probably don't see that, but 
I hope this play so. Isn't the right but, format for uh, me and Jake to start spewing um, climate uh, change discussions. But but what it does set up for is the reason to prepare your building to handle obstacles. Yeah. But it, and I'll leave you at this. You know, me being a military guy and Jake being a military hating guy, um, I have to I have to throw that in. Um, I, and I, I'm I don't saying believe that. that. Fun, Jake, I'm, I'm saying it in fun. We're just going to edit that part. You know, one of the things too. that I, one of the things that the military did teach me is that you can't possibly plan for everything. The best plan is plan to be adaptable. That's right. That's right. Take fifty percent of what you have and run with it. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Every time, every time. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. See, I got, I got, I got a military picture there. You can see the Marine, right? There you go. I see it. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. All right, listen, uh, so we're roughly all, well, we're way over time. I got one more comment from the good doctor here, and then I'm going to ask you guys to wrap up. Nobody worries about water intrusion on a Mercedes or a Hyundai because cars are manufactured, all of them, the same way. Now, for you guys, we're to, you know, Brent's an uh, off-site modern methods of construction person, but can you get the same quality each and every time on the job site when you guys are building? And could you do, let me ask another way too, could you do that if you're always switching up your trades and your help? Duplicating trades is the first way to try to maintain quality. Yep. Uh, having those 10 or 15 year relationships like we have with some of our crew members, uh, the the problem, I agree completely, nobody worries about water on a Mercedes or a Hyundai. The problem with that statement is they would if Mercedes built one of that car and then they built another car that was completely different and then another car that was completely different. That's the challenge of our industry right now is everybody wants it to be unique. It wants to fit their site. It needs to look a different direction than the, the other one. Um, it's not. It's not the same. I wish it was because that would make my life a hell of a lot easier. Well, plus uh, there'd only be one architect and one engineer, right? Exactly. And it would be Stephen, and then it would be. Well, well you know what's so interesting? I, because on, on, on our podcast, Jake, Jake, Peter, and I have the Unbuild It podcast that I didn't plug, but there you go. You know, one of the interesting things, we talked about modular housing. And my comment on the podcast was, we're not going to solve modular housing by thinking of building. It's going to be solved by somebody that has built other things like a car manufacturer or a rocket ship manufacturer or something, because we're never going to solve it as a builder. Yeah, it, 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 we just can't. All right. Here, here's my soapbox and here's a rebuttal to Jake as well on this. But you're absolutely right. It's going to be out of industry. It comes in with new ideas, new concepts. Right. And as the industry is changing and we got some of these fully robotic manufacturing facilities and all these testing facilities that are coming out. You're also going to see AI and other things play a part where these robots can build one offs and they can do it efficiently. Now, on the other side of that, you know, I always say, you know, you met, we use car analogy a lot in this industry, which I think is horrible, but in some cases, good. If you look at most car manufacturers, they only have about nine chassis, but they make 100 vehicles on it and they all look different. There is a way to do some of this stuff, but I agree, you know, Steve and Jake, what you guys are doing right now is highly personal and highly customizable to the client. But I do think every single project out there, whether it's modular or components, panelization, CLT, mass timber, there, there's, there's a piece of something that you could use to, to make your efficiency, uh, you know, make the efficiency of the build go much quicker for your job site. It doesn't always have to be one stick, one brick uh, after the other. I could see that. Yeah. So, love it. Open right. web trusses, you guys use them both, right? Yeah, there you go. All right. So, here's, so, my, here's my close out. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go because on, on social media, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna call it the unselfish challenge. So next year, all of us in the building industry need to sit back and say, what can we do to make our? What can I do to make our industry better? And that's the challenge. How do each one of us step up our game and make our industry better? So is this the long live our buildings challenge phase oh, one? Just the, it's the unselfish challenge for 23. 
That's right. How do we all, so, do we all make the <clears throat> better? How do I add to it? So. Love it. Love it. Jake, you got any, you got anything you want to leave behind? Any nuggets, any crumbs, anything? You're muted. Gotta give Thanks for letting me pop in and pick at that dork. <laughs> I love it. Happy New Year. I don't know, but I think he just typed your phone number in the chat section. That's all right. Better not have. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. All right, guys, listen, we appreciate you both being on. Merry Christmas and uh, have a happy new year coming up. So thank you. You can hang tight if you want to chat after the show. If not, feel free to, to rock and roll. So uh, next week's another Big BS Friday. We're Big Red Door of Truth's going to be on there. And we're going to get into some more details on that because that is one of the most important parts of building an energy efficient home and finding out where your holes are. And believe you me, I guarantee there's a hole somewhere. Have you ever Build a house without a hole, Jake or Steve? Ever? Ever? Nope. We just nope. built one on piers. Yeah. That's a big hole under it then, doesn't it? Big vacancy underneath. Yeah. Love it. Love it. All right, everybody. Go ahead, Mark. You were going to say something. I saw it. I was it. just going to say uh, both of these gentlemen, along with Dave, and uh, many of the folks that you see them on, on their shows, will be at IBS. Today is the last day to reserve your room block with the discount. So yep. head over to IBS, and uh, we'll see you next week with Stephen Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Hey, so. and all these guys are going to be at IBS too. We didn't we didn't pump that like we talked about, but uh, maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. That's right. International Builder Show last week of January 29th through the third, I think it is in Las Vegas. Come visit, come see us. Uh, we will be out there, and we'll be having well, some call fun. Jake on the number I provided. He's flying in on Saturday, so he's looking for people to hang out with all day Sunday before the show. So give him a call. I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll, he'll like that. Hey, bef before I go, I do have one thing. I, I want to say thank you to Mark and Dave um, on behalf of the building community. Um, you guys you guys are out there hey. all the time on the front lines waving flags and saying, hey, guys, check this out. Check that out. Mark, you know, you, you're endless with, uh, hey, talk to this person. Talk to that person. And uh, – and, and the same with, you know, Dave, I watch you on Saturday mornings and all of this. You guys are nonstop. So from the building industry, thank you to the two of you. Um, thank you for a great year. And uh, we look forward to an uh, even better year next year. Yeah, it's only a couple of days away. Thank, thank well, you so sir. much. Appreciate it, Steve. Uh, thank you, Jake, and uh, my same sentiments to you guys and, and Mark. Thanks for making us all better. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. Next Friday, 1 o'clock, Red Door Truth, right here, BS Friday. You got to wait and see what we have coming up this year. To include our international tour, a month and a half, Austria, Italy, Germany, and Switzerland, traveling around showcasing the best construction facilities that are over there and trade schools and much, much more. This is going to be an amazing year. We're going to see a lot of us on the road, and I guarantee I will be running into Jake and Steve as soon as the IBS hits. That's only three weeks away gentlemen four weeks away have a great day everybody thanks now